In a series of photo opportunities staged for the cameras, they had all actually already arrived, British Prime Minister David Cameron shook the hands of the six leaders who for the most part share his views on Syria. And then he greeted the man who doesn't, Russian President Vladimir Putin. By the UN's latest conservative estimate, and the figures only go up until the end of April, 93,000 people have now died in Syria. In the last year alone, an average of 166 people have died every single day. Neighboring countries now shelter over 1.6 million refugees. Given this carnage and despair, can the G8 make progress, where for the last two years there's been deadlock around the UN Security Council table? It appears not. This was the crucial meeting and the body language said everything. President Putin looked like he wanted to be somewhere else. President Obama fidgeting nervously as he listened to his opposite number speak. There were no new points of agreement, no new initiative. And with respect to Syria, uh, we do have uh, different perspectives on the problem, but uh, we share an interest in reducing the violence securing chemical weapons and ensuring uh, that they're neither used nor uh, are they subject to proliferation. Of course our opinions do not coincide, but all of us have the intention of stopping the violence in Syria and of stopping the number of casualties from rising and of solving the situation peacefully, including by bringing the parties to the negotiating table in Geneva. We've all agreed to push the parties to that table. And that includes by bringing the parties to the negotiating table in Geneva. And that's what we've agreed to do, to push the parties to that table. It's pretty clear there's been no breakthrough on Syria. In fact, no progress at all. They will continue to discuss the crisis over the coming hours. And there may be some progress on other issues. The atmosphere at this summit, though, has been soured. James Bays, Al Jazeera, at the G8 summit in Northern Ireland.